cataractcoach.com. And suddenly the capsule split. The dreaded Argentinian flag sign just happened. Now what do you do? Ooh, tough case. We sped the video up at three times speed. And now you can see staining of the anterior lens capsule has been done with the tripen blue dye going in here with the needle, perhaps doing a needle decompression. Now I like to actually touch the cannula, the blunt cannula to the capsule to see how pressurized is the capsule. If the capsular bag is super pressurized, then even poking in with the needle for needle decompression can cause it to split out. So here we go, needle decompression going with the needle. And let's see, putting it in there. I like to go bevel down and then aspirating, but remember to rock the nucleus too. Aspirating it just removes the anterior cortical uh, liquefied material, not the stuff that's behind the nucleus. Viscoelastic going in and, oh my goodness, pow, right open. So obviously very highly pressurized. There's probably a big wad of, of uh, intermescent lens fluid, liquefied lens cortex behind the nucleus. So I like this idea, get that nucleus up. You, with a split like that, that big Argentinian flag sign, you do not want to keep operating in the capsular bag. I agree there. Viscoelastic behind it, dispersive agent, probably a little bit in front of it too to protect the cornea. So now the nucleus is up in the anterior chamber. All right. Now that's going to be relatively easy to remove. That's no big deal. The question is though, well, how's the integrity of the capsule? Are we able to put a lens in the bag, maybe a sulcus lens? Did it zip around to the posterior capsule? Or do you have to do a vitrectomy? So be cautious here. So going with the FACO probe, let's watch carefully here. And then buzzing into the nucleus. You can also convert to SICS here. And you can see that nucleus is not that huge. You could probably make a relatively small SICS incision. If you are gonna do chop like this, I wouldn't chop into too many pieces, maybe just a couple. And the reason is, what if there is a split or break in the posterior capsule and you have eight, 10 pieces of, of nucleus? Well, likely one's gonna fall back. So keep the pieces all together here, keep it up in the anterior chamber, and let's just start emulsifying it. Now, luckily it's not too dense of a cataract. I don't see any brownness to it. So it has good density, but it's not like that brunescent, fibrous, leathery kind of stuff. So this should come down pretty easily. Then again, nucleus removal here is gonna be the easy part. And I would caution you against doing too much chopping, just do a little bit. Just keep all the pieces together. Just apply the energy. At this point, you're really not worried about how much fake energy you're putting in the eye. It's not going to be a big amount anyway. So take these pieces down. Energy, energy, energy. Okay, more viscoelastic probably. A good idea, especially behind it. Now, posterior capsule appears to be intact, fortunately. So now using the chopper again, get that piece up. Yeah, that's a good idea. I like the viscoelastic, by the way. Viscoelastic, as you know, is cheaper than vitreous. We say it all the time. It's true. Now... Now that the capsule is probably intact, the poster capsule, just emulsifying these pieces, they come out pretty easily. You also want to keep an eye out for the fluidics. Are the pieces flowing in the tip appropriately like they are now? This looks great. Because if they're still, if not flowing in the tip, then you may have some vitreous. Listen to the machine. If it goes ding, ding, ding of occlusion, but you don't see a piece of nucleus at the tip, well, then that's probably vitreous at the tip. So here looks pretty good. Ooh, be careful coming out of the eye. I'd like to reinflate with some viscoelastic before doing that. Okay, there's the viscoelastic. That looks all pretty good. And all right, more viscoelastic. Now, how much cortex is there? Not sure. And what do we do for the lens? And I don't know. Let's just watch and see. So let's see. The surgeon's probably loading up a lens now. That's probably our little delay here, switching over to the eye hand piece. Again, I just got the whole video sped it up to 3x speed so I can show the whole thing to you here. I'm watching with you for the very first time. And the total time of the surgery was about 18, 20 minutes. We sped it up to about six minutes here. So we'll get the whole case done. But yeah, there, oh, there's significant cortex that's behind. So now let's see, enlarging the incision slightly. So that probably means a three-piece lens, a little more viscoelastic. And um, let's take a look here. Coming with the lap, three-piece lens. Remember, leading haptic should go in like the lead, number seven, seven L rule, the seven on the leading haptic. Let's see, can we see that? There's the L, looks good. There's the optic, there's the L. The trailing haptic looks like the capital letter L. So seven L rule, as you know. Get that more viscoelastic is always a good idea. And I just be cautious about dialing the lens around too much because, gosh, you can rip the capsule even more. So you want to be really cautious here. And so now getting that trailing haptic, just using the chopper here, getting it from the angle and putting it in the sulcus. There you go. Now, the lens doesn't look too well centered to me, so I'm a little worried that that first haptic may not be in the right position here. All right, that optic looks a bit decentered. That's tell you about cataractcoach.com, our teaching website. I know you love the YouTube videos. I do too. But you also have to check out the website. Free Cataract Coach PDF book. 
curriculum series so you can learn FACO, learn how to deal with this stuff here. A fantastic search engine. Don't email me asking for a video that's already produced. I got more than 2,000 videos. Check them out. Anyway, let's get back to this case. So now with the lens in, looks like the sulcus, a little bit of uh, capsule was cut out with some scissors and now using the eye probe to take out the viscoelastic. Again, I'd make sure that lens is a little bit better centered up than that. But this is a stressful case, but I want to commend the surgeon. Beautiful job in recovering from a stressful case. And probably the most important thing here at the beginning was once he got that Argentinian flag sign, he put the chopper in the eye, boom, brought that nucleus up into the anterior chamber. I like that idea. And if it's like this case, I agree, just do the FACO in the anterior chamber. If it's an absolute brunescent rock, well, then just convert to MSICS and get the nucleus out whole. So here at the end, they're getting the lens a little bit better centered up. That looks pretty good. And then you may want to also lift the eyes with your chopper and see, is it in the sulcus appropriately? Do you have enough support? Do you need to rotate it at all? And this patient can have a very nice outcome. Wow, tough case. Thank you for watching. And thank you for sending the video in. Remember to check us out on social media.